Hey, good morning, good afternoon to all of you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. It is Sunday, May 2nd, so there's a lot of things to talk about. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you exactly the things that are making stories right now, and I'm going to show you the truth about the outcomes of these stories. That way you know what to expect. Now, if you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. I do upload every single day. Just not Friday from sundown to Saturday at sundown, because that's when I take my Sabbath. But God bless every single one of you. I hope you have a very happy and a very blessed Sunday. So we have some severe weather that's going to happen in the next couple of days. So I'm going to go through that first. Then I'm going to talk about the Arctic air that's going to come in and what the temperatures are really going to be like. And then a potential for the nor'easter that has a chance for the northeast. So remember, I always put links in the description to save you time. So whatever you come to hear about, please click on a link. Now today we have a few areas for, for marginal severe weather as well as a couple areas for a slight risk for severe weather for today. And we have a 2% and a 5% for tornadoes for today. And that's in the areas mostly of New Orleans, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Mobile, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi, and Metairie, Louisiana. That's for today. Plus your hail outlook is showing that you have a slight risk for hail in the areas for the severe weather, as well as the winds as well. So it's all going to be pretty much a rough day in those areas as far as the weather. So the videos I have for you today, the very top one shows you a whole country. The one right above my head shows you just for the deep south. That way you can see the rainfall expected for the next two and a half days. That's according to NAM 3K. I will show you some other models, but that's only for the next two and a half days. And as you go through your morning, you can see you do have some storms that will brew up for Arkansas, Louisiana. And then as you go through your noon time to your afternoon, then it will change from Mississippi over to Alabama as you go into late this afternoon into the early morning hours. And for tomorrow, when this surface low pressure goes towards the central U.S., now you're in a marginal and a slight risk for severe weather in these areas. And you do have a tornado risk. It is a small area. I expect this to grow a little bit, and I'll show you why. But we have 2% and 5%, and the most severe of the 5% is Tulsa, Oklahoma, Springfield, Missouri, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, Fayetteville, Arkansas, and Springdale, Arkansas. You also have wind in that area with significant wind chance in this black area. That is for Tulsa, Oklahoma, St. Louis, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, Evansville, Indiana, and Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And you also have a hail threat in the area as well and significant hail mostly for Tulsa, Oklahoma, St. Louis, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and Fort Smith, Arkansas. Now this is for tomorrow. And when I go to check your Cape values for tomorrow, you can see as you go through today, it builds up, you get some Cape values, they get strong in the south as they do get these storms. But then as they go down and we get into tomorrow, I'm showing tomorrow is going to be a little more of a significant event. You can see the Cape values really spike up for tomorrow, and it grows real strong. Look at all the purple sections, that's all 4,000 or above. And you can see where the surface low pressure does form up right over Texas and Oklahoma, and it will move to the central U.S. And when it does that, it will raise the values. Now for today, as you check the Cape values, you can see they do raise up right around 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and they get pretty strong. You're getting around 4,100, but that's over here in the Gulf. But you are getting high 2,000s, over 3,000 in the south for today. And you see it will brew up strong until about 7, 8 o'clock. Then it will quietly go down. But when you get into tomorrow, then you see the surface low pressure building up over Texas and Oklahoma. And this will create a lot of updraft, a lot of convective activity. And it will create high Cape values for strong energy to create some strong thunderstorms as it does brew up. So as you go into tomorrow around noontime, 1, 2 o'clock, then it gets really strong as this surface low pressure builds up and moves to the central U.S. Now by 9 p.m., I'm showing is your strongest. You will have a lot of Cape values all day long. Once you get to about 2, 3 o'clock, then you're climbing over 5,000 joules just for that one hour. And as you keep going, it gets even stronger and stronger. Now your strongest is at 9 p.m. At 9 p.m., it gets over 6,600 joules and that's mostly for this area and along the south right here in central Texas. And I am showing that it is true that this significant event did carry over till Tuesday because now we have a marginal risk for severe weather in this green and a slight risk in this yellow. And your biggest area for severe weather is in this 2% area and this 15% slight risk. And the slight risk is Nashville, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, Birmingham, Alabama, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Montgomery, Alabama. This is for Tuesday. Now, as we get into Tuesday, that's when the energy really ramps up. You can see your surface low pressure here. It will continue the, the updraft, the convective activity as it's pulling all the moisture, all the energy from the Gulf of Mexico as it moves over to the central U.S. 
And right now it's 5 o'clock in the morning, and early in the morning it's already moving over and brewing up energy. By the time you get to 10, 11, 12 o'clock, now you really have a lot of convective activity for severe weather. Pretty much with these Cape values, anything can go. You're already at 4,600 per hour. And then by 1 p.m., which is the furthest that we can see with the NAM 3K, for Tuesday, it gets almost 5,000 joules. But look at all this energy. Look at all this updraft, all this convective activity that will be in the south. As well as Tennessee, all this energy is going to flow right up towards you with this severe weather. And there will be significant hail, significant winds with that. You need to watch out for Tuesday. So when I check the precipitation that we have for rainfall expected for this next week, for the next five days, all the way up until Friday on the 7th, it shows that we have some heavy rainfall. All this red is one to two inches. Well, we show it's really heavy in the deep south. According to the GFS, it'll be a long strand of heavy rainfall, which could cause flooding. And all this yellow area you see is anywhere from four to five inches of rainfall. So it will be heavy rainfall in this area, according to the GFS. Now the Euro is a little more believable because it's showing a little more consolidated of heavy rainfall. Plus it's going to go to the Northeast. Because when a surface low pressure moves to the central U.S., it's going to be spinning all this convective activity, all this energy, all this rainfall right along this area. So I do believe this area will be heavy amounts. As far as how much, we still need a closer look, but we know what to expect. And the Euro is showing that it's not as heavy for Louisiana, Mississippi, you know, in the southern half, as far as the four or five inches. It does show western Tennessee can get it, but both models are showing that eastern Alabama and western Georgia is a little hot spot for heavy rainfall. And here's another story that you might hear about, a possible nor'easter in the northeast that could be coming with a lot of chances for wind, rain, snow. And you see the 540 line of the cold air coming in. I'll talk about that as well. But the GFS is showing that by Friday, you could have a possible nor'easter in the northeast. We could get down to 983 millibar. It could put a lot of rainfall, but snow for Rhode Island. And Worcester, Massachusetts could see over four inches. Providence could see five or six inches, and a little east of you could see over a foot, according to the GFS. However, that story is not trending, guys. Matter of fact, most models are showing that it's only going to be a nine something millibar close to a thousand that is not going to be that strong this is according to the euro it's shown that it'll be here by saturday and the best is going to be is a 999 and you see an upper level low right there as well and the canadian model also is agreeing with the euro that it will be by saturday but it's even weaker 1007 millibars and to be thorough i checked out the gefs and it's also trending that by saturday 1007 millibars in the northeast so that nor'easter of 980-something millibars is not trending. And when I check for velocity potential anomaly, I do see that the weather that we do have from today all the way until May 2nd with some severe weather as it winds down. Plus some possible little storms that could pop up later. But as far as the 8th goes or anything else, I'm not picking up any potential velocity anomaly that we need to worry about. Now let's talk about this cold air. What I think is the funniest part, because a lot of people really do a lot of fear mongering out there, guys. And so according to the Euro, at the AO, the Arctic Oscillation, it does show that we will continue at a negative two as it, as it gradually goes back up to a neutral phase. I'm not showing anything significant. And the GFS also agrees that we will be on a towards a neutral phase. It will slowly go towards a neutral phase and go away so we're not showing any significant cold air coming in we do have some cold air but it's not going to be what people are telling you they're going to be now this is a 500 millibar height it shows you that's potential of what can come in an area whether it has cold air with it it don't really look too serious this is for thursday and when you go and look at the actual temperatures some people might be in the 30s for a few hours before it warms back up to 60s and 70s some people in the northeast might be in the 30s. However, it's not reaching far in and it's not no Arctic air. And this shot, I love this shot. Matter of fact, I think you might see a couple thumbnails with this because it looks scary. <laughs> this is by Friday. It looks like some cold Arctic air might be coming in to the northeast and really causing cold temperatures. Here's another look at it so you can see how scary it does look. Uh, I really believe you might see this as a thumbnail today on other people's videos. But the actual temperatures that they, they won't show you will be only in the 40s. Maybe 30s in the high Midwest. But everybody's going to be in the high to mid 40s from that. It's not going to be no cold Arctic air. It won't even be freezing temperatures that I'm showing 
all across for it. It looks like it's scary, but it's not. Now, they might show you that picture. They might show you the temperature average from last year, but they're not going to show you the actual temperatures from that picture, and it's actually in the 40s, guys. And then by Saturday, it does show another cold air coming to the northeast, looking scary. But once again, it will only be a small area that could see freezing temperatures. The rest of y'all are going to be in the high 30s to the high 40s. This is not going to be no dramatic cold air. And your pollen count for today. You can see your medium is yellow, your medium high is orange, and your high is red. So you can see a lot of people has going down with their pollen count today. However, the central U.S. and Ohio Valley, y'all still in the red. So just be aware of your high pollen count for today. And there you go, guys. Nice and quick and simple. Just give you a little look and a little touch on the top stories that you will be hearing. Just so we have a little bit of information of what's true, what's not true, what could happen, what most likely won't happen. Uh, this is an AM3K. I'm going to show you what the storms will be like for the next two and a half days. Uh, we do have some storms going from the central U.S. and the Midwest. So there's a lot of things going on, as well as the storms in the south. So God bless every single one of you. I hope you have a very blessed Sunday out there today. Weather's actually beautiful over here in, in Milwaukee, so I'm, I'm loving it with the windows open. <laughs> it just feels good. I want to read from Psalm 21 today. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not with, withholden the request of his lips, Selah. For thou pre preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He acts life of thee, and thou, gavest, and thou gavest it him, even length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device, which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back. When thou shalt make them ready, thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them, be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. Amen. Hope you have a very blessed day today. God bless every single one of you. On a side note, uh, if y'all follow Mike or not, uh, Mike actually put on a new video out this morning, Mike 444, and it shows that women are having problems. So women, please go watch, go watch that video. I'll put the link in the description. It'll say Mike's video. But it's showing now that people that have actually had the vaccine is putting out high levels of protein and it's messing up women's menstrual cycles. So now they're starting to get some side effects uh, information that's coming out of everything. So please check that out, especially if you're a female. You need to know about this. God bless you all. Whether you had the shot or not, God bless you and your family. I do pray you be safe. All glory it does go to God. God of Jacob. Amen. Have a blessed day, my friends.